Okay, so we were in the chapter on diagonalization, oh. and we were looking at orthogonality. We were about to look at orthogonal matrices. Okay, just to find that. Okay, so here we go. Uh, so let Q be an orthogonal matrix. So remember, that's a matrix where Q inverse is equal to Q transpose. Or, okay. or alternatively, Q transpose times Q equals I, which is the same as Q times Q transpose. Okay. So if Q is such a matrix, an orthogonal matrix, then Q preserves norms, i.e. the norm of x is the same as the norm of qx, okay, so that's like saying it doesn't change the size of the, the length of the vector x. Q preserves orthogonality, orthogonality of vectors, i.e. the inner product of x and y is zero, if and only if qx, qy equals zero. Okay, so if x and y are orthogonal, then qx and qy are, are orthogonal. And if x and y are not orthogonal, then qx and qy are not orthogonal. And if qx and qy are orthogonal, then x and y are orthogonal. And if qx and qy are not orthogonal, then x and y are not orthogonal. Okay, so it's, this is basically saying it preserves right angles between vectors, okay? Um, in fact, I think it's, you can all, it actually also preserves angles. This doesn't say that, but it, it is the case that it's, you can think of it as preserving angles between vectors. So preserving lengths of vectors and angles of, uh, between vectors. In the special case that q is 2 by 2 or 3 by 3, and the vector is real value, then Q preserves the angles. Oh yes, that's what it's saying. Okay, so you should think of this as, say, as Q preserves angles between vectors, in particular, or right angles. And three, all the eigenvalues of lambda i, all the eigenvalues, lambda i, of Q, lie on the unit circle in the complex plane. In other words, of course, Q being a matrix, an n by n matrix, well, Q being a square matrix, we know it has complex, it has eigenvalues, it has you know, n eigenvalues possibly repeated, possibly complex, but this now says that those eigenvalues all have a magnitude of 1. Okay. Effective, and effectively, lots, all, all of this is kind of saying that Q is a generalization of a rotation matrix. You, if you, it's like a rotation matrix, but in, with, you can have complex numbers and in different dimensions than R2 and R3, where we can look at that uh, rotations. So now you have a proof of these properties, so the proof of 1. Okay, so the norm of qx squared is, of course, the inner product of qx with qx, but that prop there's, remember, there's that property of the inner product that um, for any, for any, um, for any uh, matrix A, um, this is true. Okay, in fact, sorry, not that, that is true. And if A is real, then you don't need the conjugate sign on A, because the conjugate is the, is the conjugate of A will just be A. So we do this, okay. So this is true for any matrix, and so that's how we get from this, this line to this line. We move, basically, just like you can move A to the, to A from the X to the Y by making it a transpose, you can move Q from the X to the QX by making it a transpose. But Q transpose times Q is the identity, because Q is orthogonal, so QT is, Q transpose is the inverse of Q, and so this becomes this becomes X. Well, it's identity times X, which is just X. Now we have the inner product of X with X, which is the norm squared. So their squares are equal, so their their squares are equal, and they're both positive. Norms are always positive, so they're equal. Okay. Now, property of two, that it preserves the orthogonality of vectors. So the norm, if the inner product of X and Y are zero, i.e. if X and Y are orthogonal, and the inner product is zero, then take the inner product of QX and QY, okay? And now, again, do this thing of bringing Q onto the Q from the X onto the other one. In fact, in this case, it's a QY. Then you get your transpose Q. That's I. You have the XY, but that's zero. So basically, this is saying that yeah. I mean, if this inner product of QX and QY can be thought of as giving the angle, I was giving something related to the angle between the vectors, which it can be because you think of it in. R three is it gives the inner product of x and y gives you x that's magnitude of x times vector y times cos theta right it depends purely on the sizes of x and y and the angle between them then the point is that q x q y is equal to x y okay.
that's what they're saying here in the special case where we, where we where we can think of this as the angle, right? These things are equal to each other, so these things are equal to each other. So theta is equal to phi. Well, theta is equal to phi up to an argument of two pi n. Because remember, angles are always ambiguous up to an argument of two pi n because you can go around multiple times in any direction. Okay. Final thing three that all the eigenvalues of lambda, all the eigenvalues of q, have a modulus of one. Okay, so, well, okay, now, suppose that lambda is an eigenvalue of q. Now we take the inner product of v and v. Oh, I think we're assuming that v is an eigenvector. v being an eigenvector, and let v an eigenvector. Oh, let's say this, rather. Let lambda be an eigenvalue of v, of q, with v an eigen... Ugh, sorry. The point is, we, we want to say that um, v an eigenvector, v an eigenvector of q with eigenvalue lambda, right? Okay, that's what we want to say. So you take the inner product of v and v, the eigenvector, and that's the same as qv, qv, right? We proved that that's one of the That's right. Go from there to there, right? Um, but QV is lambda V because V is an eigenvector. So you have lambda V, lambda V. So now you pull out the lambda squared. You have VV. So now you have inner product equals magnitude of lambda. Uh, inner product equals um, the modulus of lambda squared times the inner product. Okay. Now you can divide both sides by. Well, this means that the, this thing has to be one. Okay, why? Because you could divide both sides of this equation by this inner product. Because this inner product is not zero. Because the inner product of a vector with itself is never zero, unless the vector is zero. But the vector is not zero because the vector is an eigenvector. Okay, so the magnitude squared is one, or well, the modulus squared is one, so the modulus is one. Because a modulus is positive, so it can't be negative one. Okay, so I think that's, I can stop there for now. That's what you need to know about the local matrices. Okay.